So my first question for you is this. 2 to what power is 4? It's the second power, right? Okay, 2 to what power is 8? The third power, okay? 2 to what power is 32? Fifth power, right? 2 to the fifth power is 32. Okay, so 2 to what power is 20? Some number, okay, that's correct. Do you happen to know which number? It's not a whole number though, right? Okay, so there's several different ways we can go about figuring that out. One of your favorite ways is guessing, right? Trial and error. Well, do you think we could approximate it to the nearest tenth? First of all, between what two whole numbers do you think it is? Two to what power is 20? Four and five, because two to the fourth power is what? And two to the fifth power is what? 32. Now, do you think it's going to be closer to four or closer to five? Why is it going to be closer to four? 20 is closer, closer to 16 than it is to 32, right? So we're, if we're guessing to the nearest tenth, what do you think it's going to be? 4 point what? 4 point 2? Okay, that's our guess. How did we come up with that guess? Well, we knew it was between 4 and 5, and we know it's closer to 4, so we said 4.2. It's just a guess, right? Okay. You think there's a way we can get closer? How about if we try a table, like it suggests? When you turn on your calculator, please start a new document. No, we don't want to save our old one. Okay. The kind of uh, document that we need to start is what? Well, we want a table, and we're going to get that table from our graph, right? Okay. I know, you were close. You were good. So what should we put in for our equation, you think? What do you think they put in for their equation right here? 2 to the x, right? So 2 raised to the x power. Now, first of all, that's good that our graph looks like the one that they gave us, right? Now, how do I get to the table? Control T. So, I don't know about your table. My table looks like this. Is that what your table looks like? Okay, that's not helping. I already know it's between 4 and 5, and if I'm looking on my Y column for 20, oh, look, it's between 4 and 5. So, this specific question asked me to round to the nearest hundredth. Well, do you remember how to change your table settings? Can I remind you? Okay, we're going to say menu, table, edit table settings. Now where do I want my table to start? Probably four, right? Because I already know it's two to the fourth is too low but 2 to the 5th is too high. So if we started at 4, how do I want my table to count? Hundredths. So what do I need to put in right here? Very good. 0 0.01. Now can I find 20? Okay. Let's go find 20 in my Y column. Uh-oh. Did you find 20? Ne neither did I. All right, let's write down our final table, x and y. <clears throat> if x was 4.31, I got 19.8353. If x is 4.32, I got 19.9733. That's pretty close, right? But then 4.33 was what? 20.1122. That's too much. Well, let's go ahead and write one more just for good luck. So I have a better idea of what my answer is, but do I know my answer yet? No, I know my answer should be right in between those two x values, right? 
So what if we try just looking at the graph, just the graph itself? Control T, let's make the table go away. Let's look at the graph. Well, this is the graph of 2 to the x power. What would happen if I hit tab and put in a 20? Well, it doesn't look like anything happened, but did something happen? Yeah, I just can't see it, can I? So I need to change my viewing window. So let's go menu, window, and then let's check our window settings. What do I need my Y maximum to be? At least 20, right? What about if I put 25? That's at least 20, isn't it? And I put 25 so I could actually see the 20 that I put in there. You okay with that? Enter. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Well, what can I do with those two lines then? If I'm trying to solve the equation 2x or 2 to the x power equals 20, I could find the intersection, right? That's very good. Menu, analyze, intersection. This should give us the exact answer, right? Right? Lower bound on the left side, upper bound on the right side. Well, we have a problem. I already know the answer is not 4.32 because of the table, except that's what it told me. What did it do? It rounded. I don't need a rounded answer. I want the exact answer, right? Let me sketch what I see first of all so I can get, get it down. And it says this point right here is 4.32 comma 20. It's not helping me because it's not an exact answer. I know from the table it's not an exact answer, don't I? Man, I wish there was another way. Oh, there is? Oh, okay, okay. Let's talk about it then, okay? Here's the deal. We need a way to undo exponents, <clears throat> just like we have other ways to undo other operations that we have. Like if this is the equation, n plus 4 equals a, and I'm trying to solve for n, how do I, I undo the adding 4? How do I do that? I am I minus 4. I subtract 4 to get n equals a minus 4. The, the um, undoing of adding is subtracting, right? Well, what if I'm multiplying by 3 and I want to solve for n? How do I undo that multiplication? So if I divide by 3, I get n equals a over 3. And I undid the multiplication by dividing, right? What's happening to this n value right here? It's being squared, so squaring. How do I undo the squaring? So that I get the square root of a, plus or minus if you want to be technical, right? And that undoing was called square rooting or square root. What happens when our variable is in the exponent? How do I get the variable out of the exponent? Well, I have to use logarithms. And I think maybe they just want us to practice spelling it because then we write it again right down here. The way to undo exponents is to use logarithms. Here's what it looks like. n equals log base 2 of a. Log base 2 of a. Guys, how are adding and subtracting related? Kind of. Opposites really imply like a positive or negative, right? And for, for adding and subtracting, that's true, but what about multiplying and dividing? How are they related? How are squaring and square rooting related? Do you remember what that's called? Closer. They do. What kind of functions are those called? 
It starts with an I. They are inverse functions of each other. Okay? So we're going to write that down at the bottom of this page. Okay? Exponents and logarithms are inverses, like inverse operations of each other. They are inverses, inverse functions. Okay? Now, we wrote it once, right here, and then it asks us again right here. So why did I make you write it twice? Because it's important. Exponents and logarithms, and logarithmic functions are? They are inverses. Okay? Guys, how do you find inverse functions? Do you remember that? Think back to when we talked about squares and square roots, cubes and cube roots. How do we find an inverse function? Mm hmm. We switched x and y. Whoops. And then we solved for y, right, to get the new function? Well, guys, if we're given a table for an exponential function, how could I find a logarithmic function? Switch x and y. So this is 0.25, and this is negative 2. And this is 0.5, and this is negative 1. And this is 1, and this is 0, because all I'm doing is switching the x and y in the table from exponential to logarithmic, right? 2 and 1, 4 and 2, 8 and 3. And then I want to plot those new points on this graph right here, okay? So 0 0.25, negative 2. 0 0.5, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, and 8, 3. How can I tell by looking at a graph if two functions are inverses of each other? If I graph the line y equals x and those two are reflections. That's exactly right. Okay? Are these two graphs reflections of each other over the line y equals x? Yeah, so that's more proof that they are inverses of each other. Okay? Now we got this one by switching x and y, so hopefully they're inverses of each other on the graph, right? Okay? So here's the deal. This right here, super, 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 super important for today. This is like the meat and potatoes of what we're doing today, the really important part. Okay? This is the definition of a logarithm. I'm going to give you exponential form, and I need you to write it in logarithmic form. So let's make sure we know where everything goes, okay? In exponential form right here, what is this x called? It's the exponent, okay? Um, what's the b called? If x is the exponent, what's the b? give you a hint. It starts with a B. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's the base. Right? And then what's this A? It's the answer, right? Okay. So that's exponential form. Let's talk about in logarithmic form. Here's something that's really cool. This B that's a base of our exponent is also the base of our log. It's called the same thing in both places. Okay? Guys, if we're switching x and y and solving for y, where is our exponent going to end up? In our answer. Okay? I don't want to call it an answer. I still want to call it an exponent because it came from the exponent. Okay? Well, if you can remember those two, guess what you also know? The third one, right? Where's A go? 
right here, guess what it's called? It's called an argument. Any idea why? Yeah, I also have no idea why it's called an argument. It just is. I could tell you this long, drawn-out story about how two mathematicians were having a fight about what it would be called, but that would be a lie because I would just be making it up. Okay? So I don't feel like lying to you today, so I'll just leave it and say I really have no idea. Okay? But here's the cool thing. Over here it's called an answer that starts with an A, and over here it's called an argument that starts with an A. Okay? Whoa, I know. It's super exciting, right? Okay? How do we read this? How do we read this part right here? Log base B of A equals X. Now, I've tried to do a really decent job, or even better than decent, of making sure you know that there's not always just one way to do things, right? I try to show you multiple ways if there's multiple ways that I know of to solve a problem. Well, this is one of those places. This is one of those times. This is not the only way to read it. This is the way I was taught. It's the way that seems the most logical to me because it goes from left to right. Log base B of A equals X. But it is not the only way, and I want to make sure you understand that. You could read it log of A base B equals X. Does that make sense? The log of A base B equals X. Either way, base has to go with B and of has to go with A. You okay with that? And then, most important, why do we use logarithms? Remember I told you over here? I don't know if you remember or not, because it it's been at least four minutes since I said it. Okay? Why do we use logarithms? That's how they're related, but the reason we use them is to get the variable out of what? Uh huh. To get the variable out of the exponent. So I can solve for x. We still don't know 2 to what power equals 20, do we? We have a general idea, but now that we have a way to get the variable out of the exponent, we can solve that. We're not going to yet, because we need, we need to practice this a little bit, but we eventually will. Okay? What I need you to be able to do is I need to be able to give you exponential form and you give me logarithmic form of the same equation. Okay? Can you do that? So if I tell you 7 squared equals 49, I need you to be able to say log base 7 of 49 equals 2. Now, just to be clear, I'm writing a little tiny 7 lower than the regular line. Right? If we were in computer class, what would we call that? Subscript? Have you ever heard of that before? Okay, so I'm not just like writing it really small because I don't like the 7 or something, because I really like 7s. Those are nice. Okay, but I'm purposely writing it a little smaller and a little lower than, than the actual line is. Okay, just like when we write exponents, we write them a little small and a little higher, right? So how would we write B? Perfect. Thank you. What about C? Somebody else? Log base 6? Uh huh. Negative 2. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I know it sounds like I'm being a little picky about this, but if we'll, if we'll learn how to say it, then we won't be confused about what, what each other are talking about when we're saying this. Is that okay? All right. What about D? Somebody else? Close. 27? 
That's okay. 1.5. Okay. Somebody else, E. Of X. Nine. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now, can you go back the other way? Look at H. What if I give it to you in logarithmic form? Can you give it back to me in exponential form? Somebody who hasn't answered yet. What's the base of the log? Two, so that's the base of the exponent. What's the answer of the log? X, so that's the exponent. Equals 64. What about I? Squared, uh-huh, equals 64, good. I got one more, anybody want to do it? Now you cannot all volunteer at the same time, I refuse to let that happen. Yeah? Squared? Yeah, you could say power of 2, that's fine, it's the same thing, right? Okay. So there's, there are two kinds of logarithms that we're going to use super, super often, and I need you to be aware of them, okay? The first one we use so often that actually called the common log, and we write log, and it uses the base of 10, and it is so common that when we use it, we don't even have to write a base anymore. So I could just have log of 100 equals 2. Well, that's all fine and good until I ask you to write it in an exponential form, and then you have to remember that the base of this log is 10. So in exponential form, it would look like what? The base of the log is what? 10, so that's the base of the exponent. The, uh-huh, squared equals 100, right? Does that make sense? What about this one? What about L? Ten to the negative third equals x. Now the other one that I want you to know we're going to have to write in. And it's called natural log. Now natural log, common log you just write log, right? Natural log we write ln. It's like French, log on natural or something. I don't, that's not real, I made it up, just for the record. Okay, this has a base of E. So if I said a uh, natural log of 4 equals X, how would I write that in exponential form? What's the base of the log? E, right? So that's the base of the exponent e to the equals, perfect. What if it said natural log of x equals 5? How would I write that? e to the 5 equals x, yeah. So please include these two as well. So you have six problems for homework. Do you see them? Two, four, six. How are you feeling about going from exponential to logarithmic, like you did here? Tell me out loud. How do you feel about going from logarithmic to exponential, like we did here? Good. Now, like I told you earlier, this is not difficult. It's remembering what goes everywhere, but it's absolutely essential that we understand this before we can go on to the rest of the unit. So how are you feeling now? 
Good? Okay. Ask questions if you need to.